Okay, so you're saying you're saying this is the same as log of ten thousand. And so what did you cancel? You canceled the All right, so I think Tyler is saying, you said one of the logs and the 10 cancels. So I think Tyler is saying that those two things cancel. And if they do, I don't know if they do, but if they do, and we're left with log of 10,000, I'm hoping we can do that without the calculator. And again, I'll put my invisible base. What is it? 10. And so if I said, okay, I'm thinking of a number is equal to y, thinking about like what, how I'm supposed to write stuff. What, what does this become in exponential form? One person sees this. I want everybody to see that. That's the equation we're trying to figure out. 10 raised to some power is supposed to give me that 10,000. Can you look at that and just know what the value is? It's 3. It's actually a number of zeros. It's 4. Yeah, 10 to the 4th is 10,000. Okay, so the whole thing is 10,000 if Tyler's right about canceling those two things, the purple log and the 10. Michael. Huh? Okay, so let's take a look at what Michael's got here. Um, all right, so Michael's using a property that's going to be really important to us, and we'll use it a bunch today, that says if you have a log of something to a power, then you can take that power and move it to the front like physically lift it off the power and put it in the front. This is actually, in my opinion, the most important property of logs. Like I said, we'll use it a bunch today. And so Michael took that power, that 10,000, and stuck it right in the front of the log. That's true. It works. This is a property of logs. The log of 10, I'm hoping you know. Calculator will tell you, but can you hold up the number of fingers that is the log of 10? Log of 10, what is it equal to? It's 1. It's 1 because 10 to some power is supposed to give me 10. Oh, that's one, great. So that's 10,000. So what Michael is saying is that 10,000 is the thing that's supposed to go inside, right? And that was this whole calculation turned into 10,000, which is the same answer that Tyler gave us for different reasons, and they're both valid. So coming back to what Tyler said, she says the log and the 10 cancel. Absolutely, they do. Uh, if you see, um, if you see a log with a certain base and then right next to that thing, the same base, they cancel. Uh, I'll show it to you um, in one of the properties that we just briefly mentioned. Let's go back here, back here, be at the bottom. Uh, I think it's part B right here, the one that's got some red in it. It says if you have log with a certain base and then that same base to a power, the answer is just the power really, literally, cross off the log and then the base as long as it's the same. And that's exactly what Tyler ended up doing by crossing off the log and the 10. So they both have the base of the 10. Yeah, so either way, we get four. Good. Hazen, does that help? The answer is four. 10,000 was the thing inside. And then ultimately, we still had to deal with this log on the outside. So log of 10,000 was the real question. And log of 10,000 is four because of those four zeros. Okay, um, so let's uh, have you guys open to the right page, which is here, page 63, 63. Um, and one of our few remaining calendar, calendar looks. It's getting a lot shorter, isn't it? We're really down towards the end here. Um, today, we talk about properties of logs. Uh, next class, we talk about log models, that is, word problems, applications involving logarithms. Uh, that's it for this week. Then we come back on Monday. And what happens Monday? We have our quiz on everything this week, everything logs. And on Monday, we do power functions. On Wednesday next week, we do more power stuff and, our exp uh, and regression stuff. Uh, and then uh, that is the end of the new material for the test. It's gonna, uh, the end of the new material, end of all the material for this class. 
will be Wednesday of next week, one week from today. And then, is that right? Did I get my days wrong? Yeah, that's right. Wednesday of next week. And then Friday, it says TBA. We're just going to spend two days reviewing for the final exam. We will have no problem filling two days. There's a lot of stuff that we covered this year, and the final exam is cumulative on everything, including the stuff since the third test. Okay, so uh, that's that. We'll come back here to page 63 at the bottom. We'll go to Iris to read her favorite formula. Okay, so there's the formula right there. It says that uh, if you have a log with any base of some number, it turns out you can change that to log with a different base of the number divided by log of that new base of the old base. It's a whole lot easier when we do an actual example. So go to the next page, and we're going to try number two up here. So here's how the theorem works. It says if you want to change the base, you end up with two logs being divided by each other. And really, the only thing you have to keep track of is does the 12 go upstairs or downstairs? Can you read from the theorem? Where does it go? It goes up. You just have to know it goes up. It, it's kind of nice in that it's sort of already above the 2 anyway. So you just put it where it is. Log of 12 divided by log of 2. Now, the change of base formula says these are equal for any base that I choose. So, for example, I could say log base 7. As long as I pick the same number on top and bottom, it's equal. Okay, so now I've, I've changed this problem with a log base 2, because I don't have a log base 2 button on my calculator. I've made it a log base 7 problem. Is that better, worse, or kind of the same difficulty? It's the same. I haven't gained anything. So how about we don't choose base 7, but instead we choose base 71. Better, worse, or the same? Still the same. You, you can pick any base you want. But what base are we going to pick? 10, because we have a button on the calculator that's base 10. So just type that. Log of 12 divided by log of 2. Careful with the parentheses. Make sure you end, end the parentheses up on top. Just like that. Log of 12, close the parentheses, divide by log of 2. We should have a guess even before we hit enter. Log base 2 of 12 says 2 to some power is supposed to be 12. 2 cubed is how much? 8. 2 to the 4th, 16. This number is between 3 and 4. 2 cubed is too small. 2 to the 4th is too big. 3.58. Reasonable. But if you're not careful when you type it in, like if you just, if I'm not looking at the calculator, I say log of uh, 12 divided by log of 2. Calculator's not going to tell you you made a mistake. You're only going to catch it if you said, all right, the number's between 3 and 4. I know that before I do anything. So just make sure you close those parentheses up on top. Okay, just as well as choosing base 10, what other base could I have chosen? E, because I have an E base log button on my calculator. What does it say? It says ln. So instead of doing log 12 over log 2, go ahead and type in ln of 12 divided by ln of 2. Now, I happen to be able to do this one in my head, so I'm really smart. It's 3.5849. Oh, man. Second. What I get for being cocky, right? Insert the division key. 3.5849. Yeah, just like that. So use log, use ln, doesn't matter. You get the same answer either way. Go ahead and do uh, part B on your calculator. Check with your neighbor. What do we get? Again, Sarah? Thank you. Everybody, 1.23? Okay. 
All right, so let's try number three. Uh, we will go to Andy. Oh, wait, sorry, we were over here. Eric. Okay, so at the end of today, we'll be able to answer that kind of a how long question. In fact, all of these are going to be how long questions. Using logs allows you to solve how long questions. Connor? Okay, thank you. And then we'll go to Sam. How long, what? Yeah, what was the time of death? How long ago did this person die? So lots of how long questions are interesting, and uh, we'll see if we can answer some of them today. So uh, first we go to um, number four. We're going to solve this equation. Where's the uh, variable in this equation? It's in the exponent. This is the first time that we are solving an equation where the variable is in the exponent. Okay, we could graph both sides of that equation and intersect two things, right? We've done that before. But this will be the first time we do this algebraically. Okay, I said we're going to use two different methods. So here's the first method. Uh, if the variable is in the exponent, take the log of both sides. So I've got 2 to the x. It's equal to 72. And what am I putting in front of both sides? Log. So it's log of this equals log of that. Maybe we don't know why we're doing that, but we just do it and at least trust that it's still like it's legal, right? It's like adding seven to both sides. As long as you do the same thing to both sides, you're okay. And then here's the nice property. Michael shared it with us before. If you have log of something to a power, where can you move that power? Into the front of the log. That's the property. So that X literally comes up, goes in the front, and then it's little old log of two. The x is no longer up there. Take the power, move it to the front. Most important property for us of logs. Now, in a moment, we're going to use the calculator. But before we do, log of 72 is a number. Yes? Log of 2 is just a number. How do you solve this equation for x? Divide both sides by log of 2. Because log of 2 is a number, and it's multiplied by x. If it said x times 5, you would say, OK, divide by 5. We just divide by log 2. So x equals log 72 divided by log 2. And that's something we can, that's the exact answer. And we could type it on the calculator and get our decimal. So I'm going to guess something like 6.1, 6.2, 6.1, what is it, 1 7? Okay. Questions on that one? Okay, that's option one. Option two is actually a tad bit shorter. Here's option two. Going back to the original equation, 2 to the x equals 72. As part of your homework for last night, you guys uh, had problems where it said, take this thing, which is currently in exponential form, and rewrite it in logarithmic form. Log, some base, some stuff equals some other stuff. There's a 2, there's an x, and there's a 72. Can you fill in the three boxes? What's the base? 2, right? Base is 2. What goes in the next box here? Is it the x or is it 72? This is 72. And what goes last? x. Okay. That's, that's how we go between exponential thing and logarithmic thing. I talked to you guys the other day about the sort of arrow pattern. It says this guy raised to this power equals that number. 2 to the x equals 72. That's what we started with. This is just going backwards. Okay, so how much is x? Oh, it's done. 
x is log base 2 of 72. That's it. That's the answer in one step. If I want a decimal, I can't type that into my calculator. What do I do? Change a base formula. And using the change of base formula, remember that says two logs divided by each other. Which one is on top? 72, the number that's kind of up above already. So x is log of 72 over log 2. How does that compare to method 1? Same thing. So we got log of 72 over log 2. Now, I think it's kind of funny that um, clearly one of these methods is shorter than the other. It's the one in purple. One in purple took one step to get the answer. We had to do a second step if we want a decimal approximation from the calculator. The other method required one step in blue, another step in black, third step in black, and then you can type it in if you want your decimal. So definitely the purple is shorter. But every time I do this kind of problem, I do the black. I don't know why. It's just it's, that's how I was trained. That's how I do it. That's how I continue to do it, even though I know it's shorter to do it the other way. Pick one. Just get good at one of these methods. Either way is okay. Let's try part B. Part B, it's the same idea. You could take the log of both sides of this equation. In fact, maybe we'll do this in a couple of ways. Log of both sides. And then what comes down in the front? What can I move to the front of the log? It's the x. Powers come down in front. In fact, that step right there, that property, is why we took the log in the first place. Where is the variable to start? It's in the exponent. Taking logs allows you to move that thing which is in the exponent and not really reachable. Move it to the front where you can grab it. That's why we use logs. The variable is up there. And then divide both sides by what? Divide both sides by that log of e, right? We get log 25 over log e. That's our answer. We could type it in if we wanted to. I'm going to say like 3.4 or something. 3.22. I would. Okay, so option one is not the option that is the best one. Option two, instead of taking log of both sides, you could take log with a different base. We're choosing 10 because we have a log button, but we could do log base seven of both sides, but I won't because I don't have that button, but I do have an LN button. So how about instead, we go back to this original and we take LN of both sides. So on the left-hand side, it's LN of e to the x, on the right-hand side, it's ln of 25. And I know that e is not the most familiar number to you guys, and I know that ln is like another abstraction. One second, but we'll come up with a better method even than this one. ln is another abstraction, so there's a lot of symbols in there that maybe are uncomfortable for you. But one property I need you guys to know is that if you see ln and right next to it e, Cancel. Just like Tyler showed us earlier today, we had a log, and right next to it we had a 10. We crossed them off. ln and e cancel because there's an invisible base e here. So what is ln of e to the x? Not that. It's x. ln of e to the x is x. That is a property I want you to know. ln of e to the x is x. I think it's in our list of properties from the other day. Certainly, you'll find it in a box in your textbook. So ln of 25 is the answer. No division. Type it into the calculator. You'll see it is the same 3.22 we got before. And then maybe even better than either of those things is to do this kind of purple way that we talked about here, where you just write it as log with a certain base. So... It's log base something equals something. What's the log base? It's log base e. 
I'm not going to write that. I'm going to write ln. What's the next one? It's the 25, and that's equal to x. That is supposed to remind you of that equation there. But if you don't follow how the, we did the first equation, then the second one will be truly mysterious. It just looks like we wrote the answer. We did, but that's the answer, ln of 25. So if you see e floating around, ln is the, it's the log to use. I mean, that's what it's for. Any questions on either of those equations? Uh, Sam, you had something you wanted to say? Yes. We can and we should. Jason, you were going to add something? Same thing. Good. Okay, uh, we'll skip past number five and jump to number six. Uh, who's our reader now? Taylor? Okay, so the first one here is 2 to the 1 minus x equals 3. Just trying to build up the equations, make them a little more complicated. Again, where's the variable? It's in the exponent. This is the first question you're going to ask yourself, because on the final exam, you're going to see a whole slew of equations, all different kinds, right? Linear, quadratic, square root, fraction equations, exponential equations, logarithmic equations. We'll see some today. First thing you have to do to decide what technique is appropriate Where's the x? What kind of equation am I looking at? Okay, the x is in the exponent. If the x is in the exponent, undoubtedly you're taking logs. That's just how we solve equations when the x is up there. So I'm ready. Log of both sides. If you choose ln, no problem. And then we get to the step that is the whole point of taking logs of both sides. What can we do? That's right. Bring that power down. The whole power. Now it's 1 minus x. The whole thing comes down in front. 1 minus x. Comes in the front. The whole power comes down in front. Property of logs. Okay. What's that? Yes, if it said log of 10, that's just one, it goes away. Ln is fine. You'll have the same equations as up here, just you'll have ln every place I have log. Uh, you, you, you've missed your LNs. Like, you need to have the LNs there. Right here where I see, where I have red logs, you should have red LNs. Like, the LN is there. It doesn't go anywhere. You can move the 1 minus x in the front, but there needs to be a log still in the equation, regardless of whether you use common log or natural log. So if you're using natural logs, then it looks more like this. LN of 2 to the 1 minus x equals LN of 3. And then you pick that power up and you move it, but the LNs are still there. Okay, uh, I have lied to you. That equation is not correct as it is. Nobody called me out for being a liar. Well, yeah, you need parentheses. Right? You need parentheses, right? 1 minus x is the power. That power comes in the front. It comes in the front as one thing. We didn't need parentheses before because the thing that came in front was just a solitary x. You don't need to put parentheses around it. But if it's anything complicated, you got to put it. The whole thing came down in front. Okay, so here's my equation. And now we're trying to solve for x. Again, on the calculator, we'll type it in. Log of 3 is just a number. Log of 2, just a number. So how do I solve for x? Can't we divide both sides by that log of 2? Get it out of the way? You could also distribute over here. Perfectly legitimate. Let's go ahead and divide everything by log of 2. So we get 1 minus x over here, over there, log 3 over log 2.
and then two more steps to solve for x. What moves next? We'll subtract one. Subtract one from both sides. Okay, so then you can multiply both sides by negative one or divide both sides by negative one, ultimately change the signs. So x equals negative log three over log two uh, plus one. I'm gonna just change the signs. Negative on both sides. <clears throat> okay, so again, to kind of bring it together, all of these equations have the variable where? In the exponent. If you see the variable in the exponent, what are you taking of both sides? Logs. That's how we deal with it. And then we make use of that magical property that says, if you have log of something to a power, power comes in the front, that's what we did here, and then it turns into like a more traditional type algebra thing. I don't know how to solve it from there. You'll have to inspect it. But that's the end of the new piece of this puzzle. Take logs, move the power in front, then do something that hopefully is natural. Okay, next page. You can see each equation a little bit more complex than the one before but I'm not seeing that whole equation. What am I looking for? Yeah, where's that variable? In the exponent. I know what I'm doing, I'm taking logs. But for this problem, taking logs right now, it's premature. It's not wrong. It's okay to take logs right now. Don't copy that down, this is a bad idea. But the problem is that taking logs right now does not allow me to bring this thing into the front because the property that, that I have here is that, um, is that if you have log of uh, x to the p, something like that, one thing raised to a power, then the power comes in front. That's the most useful property to us for logs. It's gotta be one solitary thing raised to a power. It cannot be 100 minus 100 e, and then finally I see my power. It's gotta be a solitary thing. Okay, so then let's not take logs first, because stuff is in the way. Yeah, so the stuff that's in the way needs to get out of the way. I need it to be this thing right here by itself. You need to solve for that first. So the first 100 needs to move, and the negative 100 needs to move, so let's move them. So we subtract 100 first. So 10 subtract 100 is negative 90. And then what do we do next? We divide by the negative 100. Okay, you gotta move those hundreds out of the way before you do any logs. So we'll divide everything by negative 100. E to the 0.03t equals, how much is negative 90 divided by negative 100? Nine tenths. Uh, on the last step, we divided each side. Correct. I'll put it up here in a different color. And then we reduced negative 90 over negative 100 to 9 tenths. Okay, what have we done? We 
they have gotten the exponential piece alone. That's step one. Now that the exponential part is alone, I'm ready to take logs. There's two choices for taking logs, two, two natural ones anyway, because you have two buttons. There's the log and there's the LN. Which one is the better one for this one? It's LN. So we're going to take LN of both sides. All right, at this point, I'm going to deviate slightly from what we've been doing every time. At this stage, normally, we would take that power and bring it down in the front, right? If you do that, you're not taking advantage of one of these properties that I want you to know. I think we saw it. I don't know if we wrote it. Did we write it here? There. Yeah. Yeah, that guy right here. LN of E to the X is X. You see ln right next to an e, you cross them off. It's just x, just whatever's up there in the power. So on this page, I'm going to cross off. What am I crossing off? ln and e. This left-hand side becomes just 0.03t. No logs, no powers, no e's. Just 0.03t. If you see ln, because you put it right next to an E, cross them off. And then what do we do to both sides? Divide by 0 0.03. So we get ln of 9 tenths divided by 0 0.03. Eric? Eric says this. Anybody else confirm? No. For this last step, the dividing by the 0 0.03. Yeah, we did that right here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Questions on that one? Okay, uh, let's try number seven. Uh, who's our reader now? We'll go to Ben. Okay, so let's try this one. First, we've got to write an equation before we do any solving stuff. We had two kind of interest formulas. You had the complicated one with the N in it, and then you had PERT, PE e to the RT. Which one is this? This is the complicated one. When do you get to use PERT? When it says continuously. It doesn't say interest is compounded continuously. It is not PERT. So it's the complicated one. You remember the complicated one? Write down the complicated one. Okay, so there's our complicated one. Any kind of compounding other than continuous compounding. Okay, so we start replacing stuff. Instead of P, 5,000. One plus, instead of R. Yeah, be careful about converting to a decimal. Percentages always become decimals in this formula. Divided by N, which is how many times you compound every year? Four times, because it's quarterly. To the N, still four, times T. Well, this question says, how long? 
So I feel like I don't know what T is, which means I better know what goes on the left-hand side. Yeah, the left-hand side, like the whole formula tells you how much money you have at some future moment in time. I'm trying to pick a moment in time where I have 15 grand. So 15,000 goes right there. <clears throat> Okay, first, any questions on plugging into the formula? Second, what do you look for beside, before you, you come up with your plan? Where is the variable, right? That's what we keep asking. Where is that variable? Where is it? It's in the exponent. What are we using? Logs. What are we doing first? What are we doing first? Get the exponential piece alone. That's what we have to do first. Okay. So, um, what do we have here? I've got a 5,000 that's in the way. So, what should I do to both sides? Divide. Divide both sides by 5,000, and I get 3 equals uh, this thing right here. Okay. So, maybe to make life a little easier, you type in the thing in the parentheses, or you just find it. I guess it's not so bad. So divide both sides by 5,000, we just get the 3 there. Now the exponential piece is by itself. So what do I do to both sides? Log. Do I use log or ln? Doesn't matter. I mean, if it's e, I'm definitely using ln. If not, I don't know, probably doesn't matter. If you take calculus, you're going to be using ln every time. You might want to start practicing now if you are headed that down that path. But it doesn't matter. So let's take the log of both sides. So we go log of 3 equals log of all this other stuff. And then the whole point of taking logs in this kind of problem what can we do? Right, the exponent part goes in front. What's the exponent? 4t. It goes in the front. So we've got log 3 equals the 4t comes in the front. Log of 1.006. Yeah, to be safe, a parentheses. That was just typing this um, this thing into the calculator. That is 1.006 if you type it in. Okay, trying to solve for t. T is finally in a friendly place. It's accessible. It's not upstairs anymore. It's down here. So what are we going to do to both sides to get that t by itself? Divide in by the log. Are we dividing by anything else? Four. We're dividing by the 4. Let's do them both. One shot. Divide both sides by the same thing. 4 log 1.006. Does anybody have Sandy for 105? I know that Sandy insists that people do this in one step. Don't divide by log and then divide by 4. Let's do it in one shot. Well, let's divide both sides. 1.006. So I think we've got our answer. I'm just going to copy it. T is the log of 3 divided by 4 log 1.006. Uh, crossing off the 4s, crossing off the logs. All right, if I could do like a reasonable estimate of that number in my head, is that impressive? Because I didn't impress you guys earlier today. Come on, that's crazy, right? Log of 3 divided by 4. Um, I'm going to estimate, uh, let's say like, I don't know, 35 years. 45? I forgot to carry a 1. 45 years. Is that right? 45.9? 
that's around 45.9. Be really careful when you type that in. It's easy to type that in wrong. So I'll just project it real quick. I say it's easy to type it in wrong because if you type it like you see it, you get it wrong. Log of 3 divided by 4 log 1.06. That's what it says, that's what I type. I get a number very close to zero. What did I do wrong? Yeah, that denominator is one thing. You can see it when you write it. That four and the log are both downstairs. Calculator can't see that until you tell it. This whole thing is a denominator. So that should give me the 45.9. Yeah, so, so what does that mean? Yeah, so you have 5,000 and you want it to triple. And if your interest rate is 2.4%, it's going to take about 46 years for it to triple. It's true. That is a long time. Yeah. Okay, any questions on that one? Okay, I have made a change to number eight. Can you guys cross off the equation that you have for number eight and replace it with the thing in blue? 10 to the 2x minus 10 to the x equals 2. All right, so we're going to solve this equation up here in blue. So cross it off, write down that blue one. All right, where's the x? It's in the exponent, so it feels like logs. Uh, is this a good moment to take logs? No, I see that subtraction over there. That's bad news. In fact, I see two x's. That's also bad news. We haven't seen any of them today where there's more than one variable. Okay, turns out there's a little bit of a twist here. It's okay if you don't see it like the first time you look at a problem like this, but at some point I want you to see it. So here's the twist. Suppose that I just consider 10 to the x, just the piece that's in the middle there. And I'm just going to square it. Just randomly take that middle thing and square it. What do you do with the powers when they look like that? You multiply them. We multiply powers like that. So that's really 10 to the x times 2, which is 10 to the 2x. Just took the middle thing and I squared it. We'll take a look. The middle thing is 10 to the 2x. The first guy is 10 to the 2x. So that yellow thing squared is the green thing. Said another way, I can think of that equation as being, uh, let's see, something minus something equals 2. The yellow thing, I'll just call it y for a second. What happens to it in the green thing? It's really squared. That is the pattern that we're looking at in that blue equation up there. Is that the guy in the middle happens to be uh, squared and sitting in the front. And if I gave you that equation, y squared minus y equals 2, you'd say, oh, Ian, you are the nicest guy ever. Thank you for giving us such an easy equation to solve. But we just have to make this leap now. The 10 to the 2x equation is the y squared minus y equation. So do, people, do folks see? OK, so let's solve it. Solve y squared minus y equals 2. y equals 2 is, could be. I think that is an answer, but uh, how'd you get it? Oh, they don't work that nicely. I think you got lucky. Yeah, y times y minus y is, they don't go together. They're not like terms. Yeah, but you did, you did stumble on the right answer, one of them anyway. Um, this is what kind of an equation because of the two? It's a quadratic equation. What number do we like on the right-hand side? What number do we like on the right-hand side? Zero. Quadratic equations almost always like to be equal to Zero. I'll subtract that two. Okay. You could solve any quadratic equation with the 
quadratic formula. If you're a glutton for punishment, you could complete the square. Don't ever do that unless somebody tells you you have to complete the square. Or if you're lucky, what does it do? It factors. Okay, let's try factoring. Taylor says that. Agree or disagree? Okay, so we're good at factoring. I hope we're good at factoring. And then we split it down the middle. And then uh, what are the two answers here? Y equals 2, Y equals negative 1. Those are our two answers. So Hazen got Y equals 2. That was a coincidence of the numbers, I think. Okay, can I make a little connection here? You guys have a lot of uh, experience factoring quadratics just like that. You guys remember the whole, um, you know, like x minus a zero and then x minus another zero and then x minus another zero. We just kept doing x minus zeros. Well, okay, I mean, isn't that what's going on? Well, what was the first zero? It was two. Do you see the y minus the zero? And then what was the second zero? It was negative one. Do you see y minus negative one? is in there. So like you've been doing this x minus business for a while, but we just stuck on like a third factor this semester. Okay, so those are our two answers. Is that the answer to the problem? y equals 2 and y equals negative 1? What variable was in the original problem? What letter? x. Original question's way up here. 10 to the 2x minus 10 to the x equals 2. It's very strange to say y equals 2 is the answer to that equation. Okay, we invented y to try to make that crazy equation look familiar to us, make it workable. So let's go back. I, I don't really have y equals 2. What did I really have instead of my y? I really had 10 to the x. That's the very first thing I substituted. I didn't even write it down formally, but that y was supposed to be the thing in yellow. So it's not y equals 2, but it's really, we're not going to do this problem down here in number 9, so you have some space to use. It's not really y equals 2, it's 10 to the x equals 2. And it's not y equals negative 1, what is it? It's 10 to the x plus negative 1. So I'm just going to add up here just a little note for us, just in case you look at this later on. We let y equal 10 to the x. That made it look workable, and then we came back, back to the x's. Okay, I have two equations to solve now. 10 to the x equals 2, 10 to the x equals negative 1. Let's do the first one first. There's the variable and the exponent. What do you use? Logs, finally. I mean, we didn't do any log stuff in that whole problem. It was all substitution and then quadratic factoring. But let's use logs. Do you want to use ln or do you want to use the common log? Common log is the right one to use. Because it's a base 10 already. Okay, Tyler's favorite theorem on the left-hand side. What is the left-hand side equal to? It's x. You see log of 10 to the something, the answer is the something. Just cancel. And I know it's going to be hard for us to train ourselves. Okay, sometimes we bring the power down in the front, but once in a while we get to cancel. You just have to know when the once in a while is. Log and a 10, cancel. Ln and e, they cancel. Anything else, you bring the power down. So those guys just go away. And so we get x is log of 2, and that's the answer. And you could type that into the calculator and get a decimal if you wanted to. Same idea for the second one. 10 to the x equals negative 1. What's x going to equal? Log of negative 1, right? That's what we did before. 
log of 2, log of negative 1. All right, on the calculator, how much is log of 2, roughly? 0.3? Great. On the calculator, log of negative 1. Shield your eyes when you do it. Calculator might blow up. You don't want glass in your face. Log of negative 1, what's going to happen? It's going to give us this non-real error. Log of negative 1 is no good for us. Log of any negative is no good. So I'm actually hoping, with a little bit of practice, that we just look at this 10 to the x equals negative 1, and we say, oh, are you kidding me? We can't. We can't have 10 to the x equal a negative. There's no way. No way. So the answer is log of 2, and that's all. Good? OK. Uh, so we're skipping 9, and we're jumping to the next page, number 10. So looking at the first equation, it says 2 log of 5x equals 4. This is a different kind of creature than all the ones we've solved today. For all the other equations, where was the variable? In the exponent. Where's the variable here? It's inside of a log. We have not solved things where the variable is inside of a log. But let's give it a shot. Step one, get log by itself. So what do we do to both sides? Divide both sides by 2. So let's see, that leaves log of 5x. Divide this side by 2, we just get 2. Okay, turns out it's actually really easy to solve from here if you know what you're doing. So here's what you're doing. You're recognizing what we learned about logs the other day. You're going to transform this into an exponential equation. I'll write down three blanks. You guys got to fill them in. Something raised to the something equals something. What does log of 5x equals 2 mean? What goes in the first box? It's 10 because of that invisible 10 that we didn't write. That's the base. It goes in the first box. 5x or 2? That is a 2. What goes in the last one? 5x. Again, in your homework for last night, you guys did a bunch of that. Convert this log equation into exponential form. This is why it's useful because if the x is inside, this is how you get it not inside. But we're almost done. How much is 10 squared? 100 equals 5x. Oh, an equation that's really easy. Like you kind of feel like you didn't do anything because it just became easy with, you know, before we even knew what happened. What happened is you have a way now to get x's from inside of the log. You just write them in exponential form. Just translate them. So how much is x? 20. 20 is good. Okay, middle equation. Where is the x? Where is the x? It's inside of a log. Inside of two logs. Okay. So two x's, there's got to be some way to mush them together and make a single x. Okay, first technique. It says get the log by itself. Okay, well, all right. Well, let's at least get the logs near each other. So how about we take the log from the right-hand side and just add it to both sides? So we'll put over here, uh, let's say I have log base 2 of 4x. I'm going to add this other guy to both sides. They do have to be the same base for us to do anything further. Yes. They will always be. 
Oh, uh, yeah, maybe you could just use the formula, the change of base formula to make them the same. Yeah, it's a good observation. For us, they're always going to be the same base to start with. Yeah. Okay, so we added log 2 to both sides to get the logs at least near each other. Okay, you now have x's in two different places. It turns out there's a property of logs that will come to our aid here. We haven't used it before. It's not near as important as the one that we did where the power comes in front of the log. That's the most important thing for us for logs. But there is another property. Well, there's a bunch of properties, but there's one that's going to help us here. Here's what it says. It says if you have log of two things multiplied together, it turns out it's the same as the log of the first thing plus the log of the second thing. If you have log of two things multiplied, that's a single log, you can write it as two separate logs. You can like in some way distribute the log in, right? Log A, log B. But it doesn't become times. It turns to multiply. Let me just show you an example, a numerical example, so we can see this property in action. Okay, for example, suppose that I did a log of 3 plus log of 8. Log of 3 is a number, log of 8 is a number, I add them up, I get some other number. Super. Log of 3 plus log of 8. I want to compare that to a single log. According to this property, if you have two logs added up, you can make it just a single log, but what do you do to those two numbers? You multiply them. Where'd it go? So what goes in here? 24. 3 times 8 goes right in there. I'll put 3 times 8. You could also just type 24. Can you guys do this one in your head? If that theorem is true, then it should be the same 1.38. Okay? So if you have a log with two numbers multiplied inside, you could separate it, do two different logs, and just add them up. That's a different example. Suppose that I had a log of 14. Log of 14 is that number. What two logs can I add up? Then it'll be the same, but log of 14. I could do log of 7, and then and what, about, what do I put in between log of 7 and log of 2? Put a plus sign. Multiply inside the log. That's really 7 times 2. We could do log of 7 plus the log of 2. Two different logs. Add it up. In my head, 1.146. This is the property. Not as important as the other property, but still something we could know. So let's come back here. I currently have a log plus another log. I can merge them together and make a single log. That's what I want to do. Log, the base stays the same as log of 2. What goes inside? Is it the sum? 4x plus x? What is it? 4x times x, so 4x squared. I'll just write it as 4x times x right now. Two logs added, one log multiplied. That's the property. Still equal to 2. Okay, let's go a little further in here. Log base 2 of what's really inside? That's really 4x squared. We've done something quite good there, because it used to be there were a couple of x's in different places. Now there's a single x. They've all been grouped together. Okay, how do you handle? How did we handle this thing right here? We had a log equation, a basic log equation. We went to this exponential form. Do the same thing for this guy. Give yourself three blanks. Something to the something equals something. Billman, Hazen. Uh, oh, good question. Um, all right, Hazen wants to move this 2 to the front. Uh, and it turns out a lot of times you can solve these in multiple ways. You, it's, you know, if it's allowed to move the 2 in the front, then move it, and then you can move it out of the way, and that's totally fine. I'm really glad you asked this question. Are we allowed to move the 2 in the front? Raise your hand if you think we should, if we are allowed to move the 2 in the front. 
Not a lot of support for Hazen. Raise your hand if you don't think we're allowed to move the two in the front. All right, there's still some people. Raise your hand if you don't like raising your hand, because not everybody voted. All right. All right. So we want to know whether or not we can move the power in the front. It feels like Hazen is just pointing out the same property that I've been saying is the most useful one. You got a log of a power, you can move the power to the front. There is a subtle but important difference between all the other examples we saw and this one. If it looked like this, 4x was one thing all being squared, then you can bring that power in the front. But you can only bring a power in front when it applies to everything inside the log. And so that's why I'm really glad you asked that question, because this is a good moment for us to observe that, uh, what did we do here? So looking for places where we pulled the, uh, pulled the thing into the front. Yeah, what was the power on this example? It was x. It was a single x on a single 2. So that x was allowed to come in the front. Even when it's more complicated, what was the power here? 1 minus x. I don't care that that's complicated, but it's only on a single 2. It's only on a single thing. Everything inside the log is being raised to the 1 minus x. That's the property. So what's in the way that's, allow that's not allowing me to, to move this 2 in the front is that 4. That 4 gets in the way, and you can't bring it in the front. Good question. OK, so let's uh, fill in the blanks here. What's the base? 2. What's the power? The other 2. What goes here? Or x squared. That's our translation. Move the pieces around. You just have to know the pattern. It's always the same pattern. The sooner you memorize it, the easier it will be to recognize. OK, and now, I again, I feel like I've done nothing. I've just rewritten, but all of a sudden, I have an equation that's very friendly. 4 equals 4x four squared. So 1 equals x squared. So how much is x? Well, somebody says plus or minus. Is it just 1, or is it plus or minus 1? Plus or minus, right? When you have an x squared, you got to take the square root, and that's when we put in the plus or minus. OK, you guys aren't going to like this. But actually, uh, forgetting to put in the plus or minus might save you a point on the test for this example. Because if you try plugging x equals negative 1 in here, then you are trying to take the log of negative 1. And what did we say about that? It doesn't work. Connor? Why wouldn't you just take the square root of both sides? Yeah, so we take the square root of both sides. Wait, wait, all right, hold on. Connor is going back up to here. So, all right, perfectly legitimate to take the square root of both sides. All right, Connor, what's the square root on the left? Two, I agree. And the square root of x squared is x. That four doesn't stay four. What's the square root of four? It's two, right? And how much, how much is x? X is still one, so it's okay, as long as you don't forget to take the square root of everything. Okay, so the answer is technically plus or minus one. And then the negative one gets rejected because you cannot stick a negative inside of a log. <coughs> okay, last one. Log x plus log x minus 3 equals 1. Where are the x's? inside the logs, and there's two of them. And we've seen this property before. When you have two logs added up, what can you do? You can make it one log with a multiply. So let's do that first. So this becomes log of x times x minus 3. That's equal to 1. OK, I don't know if I should distribute yet. I'm not going to because I'm not sure exactly where it's headed. But look, I have a single log equation. This is the part where you write your three green circles or squares. 
fill in the blanks. So let's do it. Something to something equals something. Make sure you make your squares appropriately sized. I don't know. Kind of have to know where they go, I guess, first. So what goes in the base? All right, the base is invisible. In this case, it's a 10. What's the power? 1. What goes in this big box here? x, x minus 3. That's your equation. 10 to the 1 equals x times x minus 3. Okay, what kind of an equation is that? It's a quadratic, because if I distribute, that's an x squared equation. Okay, something I can handle. So let's distribute, I'll try to sneak this down here. So I go 10 equals, distributing here, x squared minus 3x. And then see if you can finish that one. What magic number do we like on quadratics? Zero, so move that 10 over. Factor it. And then we'll factor. Okay, so how much is x? x is 5, x is negative 2. Yeah, so it feels like we should just double check. I don't want to say the negatives get automatically rejected. I don't want to say that. What I want to say is plug it back into the original, and if it turns out you're taking log of a negative, then absolutely reject it. So if we plug negative 2 in, if we plug negative 2 in, yeah, log of negative 2, is that okay? That's not okay. That's the moment to reject it, but not just because it says negative 2 for an answer. Because suppose that the problem had been log of x plus 4. Let's just say that was in the original. If you plug negative 2 for x, what do you get? You get log of 2. Is that okay? Yes. yes. So don't just say all negative x's get rejected. It's only rejected when it becomes log of a negative number. So we'll reject this guy down here. Okay, so bullet point summary for today. First thing you look, where is that x? For almost all of the equations we solved today, where was the x? It was in the exponent. And when you see the x in the exponent, what are you going to take of both sides? Logs. In fact, this is why we have logs. This is why we in Math 107 talk about logs, is so you can solve equations where the x is in the exponent. Down here, we ended up solving some equations with logs in them already. The basic idea there was to write that green square pattern and just fill in the blanks and then solve it as some ordinary other kind of equation. Okay, uh, 15 seconds early. I'm just so nice to you guys. I'll leave it. All right, so the homework is there. We'll see you on Friday. Yes.